Hi there. So this is Aditya Sharma from the Plus Add-ons for Elementor team, and today we'll together learn how to optimize the Plus Add-ons for Elementor for its best speed and performance, so that you can uh, enjoy faster sites. So starting with uh, one of the primary concern which we uh, which I face the most is 120 plus widgets, and it's quite a lot when people think of an Elementor add-on, and they are worried if they will be affected with performance. And in this video, I'll be sharing how to optimize this add-on for its best performance for using eight step, which you can follow to get the best speed. So starting with the first one, the system requirements. Why system requirements is important? Because you can say that is the very base, like based on how your system is configured. Now to check if your hosting environment complies with these settings. Uh, you simply have to go to your WordPress backend uh, and go to Elementor System Info. And once you click this, you will see all the your server details which you are uh, like your hosting environment is on. So its uh, PHP version is uh, 7.4 here, and we suggest to keep it always above 7.2. Uh, as we speak, we are working on PHP 8 compatibility, which is the latest one. Uh, this is one of the very important things that is the memory execution limit. So uh, this should be 256 MB or above. Uh, so here we have a uh, 256 memory limit. Uh, when you're using a lot of Elementor add-ons or uh, multiple widgets from the Plus add-ons, then I'll suggest you to go with 512 or with very complex setup like WooCommerce. It requires more memory limit. But most in the most maximum cases, it's uh, 512 MB does the job. Uh, now moving ahead to the second point, which is turning on the widgets which you only required before you start the project. So there's no point activating all the widgets at once which you do not plan to use and uh, unnecessarily load your backend experience so that whenever you're making your site at the backend, you have a faster experience. So make sure, for example, you're using uh, only the WooCommerce, okay? So may you, only, you can only turn this on and keep the rest off, okay? So there's no need to uh, add the other features or the form plugins if you're not using uh, like if you're using just contact form, there's no point adding ninja forms or the others. Or if you're just using for the block builder part, so then you can only turn the block building part. So that's why before starting the project, make sure what widgets you plan to use and turn uh, turn them on only. So like you can at the first, you can keep them all off. Okay. And for example, if I'm making a WooCommerce store, so I'll just turn this, them on. Okay. So this way you'll notice that you already have a better experience when you're starting off because uh, there's no point adding all the unnecessary widget at the very beginning because I'm pretty sure in the most cases no one would be using all the 120 widgets on this side. Now once we have selected all the widgets which you plan to use on the website, uh, you can simply head over to the plus extra which brings us to the third point, turning off all the un uh, unused things. Okay, So this is not the widgets but these are the integrations the plus add-ons provide. For example, if you're not planning to use Google Maps, so okay, so you can just make them none. What you'll see is that extra requests are not loading on your front end. Similarly, if you're not planning to use a preloader, you want to keep all things simple, then you can disable them. So there's no point adding them to. And same similarly for the Lottie files. So if you're not using Lottie files, just keep them off. So this is one of the important things which we see on the sites when people are uh, turning all of them on, even though they are not using it so this may just add extra requests or harm your page load speed icon binds is also in font which uh, if you are not using it so simply disable them because there's no point adding the request when you are not using google maps or doing any such integrations so this way you will make sure that no extra or unused request is done on the front end And this is one of the exclusive feature which allows you to deliver assets in multiple ways. So this is smart optimized. So in this way, as you can read, uh, this minifies our JS and combines all the multiple requests of all the widgets in a single file. So whatever may be the number of widgets you plan to use, they will all reduce into one single CSS and one single JS from the plus add-ons for Elementor. So before we get started, let's edit, uh, add any template from a live site. Uh, simply select any of the sections. So I'll be using this carousel from a live site. Now hit copy and we'll before we paste, make sure that the cross domain copy paste is turned on here. So we'll turn this on, hit save. Uh, let's refresh so that the extras is enabled. Now what you have to do is simply right click over here 
and hit plus paste okay so what you'll see that this will be copied with all the carousels and the images on the live site now when we hit update uh, now this will be this page will be dynamically scanned for all the assets used and this will deliver one single assets okay so let me uh, refresh this page and you will notice that the plus uh, this plus post is the single CSS generated, uh, which is of just 10 KBs, and this is generated with the plus performance catch. Now, sometimes you may encounter issues of visibility, like the things are not looking same as in the back end. So what you have to do is simply purge all catch. Okay, so this will clear all such issues, and they can also be browser catch. So what you have to do is, if you are on Mac, hit Command Shift R, and if you are on Windows, hit Control Shift R. And using this both ways, you will clear all the browser cache for the page and the browser will fetch the new page from the server. So now you can confirm that your page is like looking perfectly fine. Due to this performance cache, the, all the extra unused uh, CSS and JS which are not required will also be minified, uh, making sure that you get the best size in very much trim for the faster performance. So now we have completed with this one and we'll move to the fifth point which is using the unused widget scanner. When you have completed your project and now you are like, it's the project is done, so this pack up. So I'll always suggest to use the unused widget scanner then so that uh, the widgets which you have selected before starting the project, uh, you can make sure that you have used them and if anything is left, you can use the unused widget scanner. And the plus arounds for Elementor was the first Elementor add-on to bring this power of scanning unused widgets without manually remembering or noting down the widgets what you have used. So let's use it and we have used carousel and gallery listing here. So let's scan now. So you can see it's 104 unused widgets found. So this is disabled. So you can see gallery listing which was this one and carousel one must be on. Uh, now you'll see that extra feature not turned off. So this we have to do manually because these are extra options and we have to manually make sure that we haven't turned on for any of the blocks. So, so let's, for example, if you haven't used event tracker, this is for the Facebook uh, tracking or Google Analytics tracking uh, on button clicks. So you can turn them off. Okay. So you can simply turn them off and you are good to go. And once, even if you have completed your site and you do not plan to use cross domain copy paste, then uh, do this and hit save. So now you'll see that you will have a better uh, backend experience and uh, even the elemental loading issues which you might have been facing would also go away. And with this, we'll step into the next issue, which is the sixth one, which is one of the most common issues faced with most of the elemental add-ons, which is the elemental loading panel, uh, like the screen get freeze and there's a loading issue. So we'll share multiple ways on how you can fix it. So let me explain you by how this looks like. So let's uh, refresh the page for the backend. And what you'll see is sometimes this keeps on loading and this freezes. Okay. Uh, so uh, like the previous point, which I said is you can remove all the unused widgets. So this can also fix the issue sometimes because you are adding un uh, enabling all the 120 widgets at once can create a load. But most of the times it's run well, as you see now. Uh, even in 256 MB with all the widgets turned on, but there can be other ways you can fix them too. Uh, in the very first, we talk about hosting configuration. So the, one of the primary reasons why this happening is because your memory limit is too low. That's why you have to make sure if it's 256 MB and if you are using a lot of plugin, then make sure it's 512 MB. So you just have to check the memory limit and here a lot less than 256. I would always appreciate to go at 512 or 256 and then you'll see that your backend is loading smooth and fine. Sometimes even ha hard reloading the backend can also fix this. So as we said before, just hit Control Shift R and this will hard reload the page completely and you will see that the backend load is fixed. Next, uh, sometimes we also see that a user is having mixed HTTPS are also facing this. So what you have to do is go to settings, general and make sure that the UI, if you have an SSL, uh, confirm that you have S over here because we have seen quite a few times that even after SSL, uh, WordPress address and the site address URL are without uh, S, which causes mixed HTTP and creates insecure content and you face the loading issues too. So you can simply add uh, S and hit save. And you can also check uh, if you have mixed HTTP by going to site health. Uh, 
and you will see that there is this issue of HTTPS then you can make sure to fix that uh, we always suggest to make a practice to frequently look at your site health and check the errors like if, if inactive themes or if you are missing any modules or any such issue then simply talk with your host and, conf uh, and address them how to fix it because uh, these are very important to make sure that your WordPress runs smoothly Lastly, you can also check by changing to default WordPress theme if the Elementor loading issue is gone. So simply go to themes, uh, activate the default theme and check if the loading panel issue is solved from you or not. Currently we are using the Nexter theme which is our own the theme uh, which has the complete theme builder solutions uh, which you'll also see in our future videos We're using which you can make free in the free version you can also make headers, sections, 404 pages and all with the uh, a lot of settings you can also add code snippet but for now sticking to the performance part will show you how nexter theme which has its own performance features which will help you tune the performance to its best and this brings us to the last which is the eight point of removing the bloat from your wordpress site so you'll see in the performance tab uh, we have enabled uh, these extra features which will remove unnecessary code from your WordPress header or extra requests like emojis if you are not using any emojis on site. So you can simply turn them on and you will see that your site header is clean, uh, unnecessary requests are removed. Uh, so these are few, most of them for header. Dasicons is also, as you can see, they are all explained below in a very simple way. So disable embed, this is a JS which loads uh, on, on your site. And if you disable them, like embeds are not required if you are not using any such embed feature on your site, then you can disable them. If you are not using emojis, then you can disable them. And similarly for dash icons, which are the icons for the backend. And these are the features which will help you clean the header. And we'll be adding more such handy features like delaying JS and a lot of stuff which will help you gain maximum speed scores uh, with your WordPress site. We do have some security features too, like disabling XM, uh, XML RPC, uh, hiding the WordPress version, uh, disabling the WordPress REST API if you're not using them. And we also you can also change the WP admin path. For example, if you want to hide the WP admin path from public, like yoursite.com slash WP admin, you can make it uh, yoursite.com your own admin login. So you can just uh, have your own login custom URL. So that's it for Nexter for now. We'll be covering more features of how Nexter can make your site experience more fast. And these are all in the free versions of Nexter. Like you will get all the performance cleaner and security in the free version itself. That's it for this video. Hope this uh, gives you a better and faster WordPress experience uh, with the promise of being one of the most performance element add-on for you so that you can get the best scores in GT metrics, page space insight without any hassles. Uh, I have also linked a survey in the email so you can share what uh, how this video has helped you to gain the best speed and performance. Uh, I'd love to improve this and I'll also share more tips and tricks with you so that you can get the best speed. Once again, thank you so much. Looking forward to see amazing and performance optimized websites. Uh, and if you have any more questions or you face any issues still, our team is always there. You're more than welcome to raise a ticket. We'll help you. Uh, why you are facing that elemental loading issue, we'll check that and we'll sort it out. Thank you so much.